Hey everyone, Andrew Chelman here with MachineSkills.com. As always, make sure to subscribe to us on YouTube, stay tuned on our website so you don't miss any free machine tutorials. In this video, I want to cover sample editing on the Machine Studio hardware. And the workflow on the hardware is very, very fast. It just takes a little bit to get used to. So hopefully this video uh, can get you started with editing your samples. So first things first, I'm going to uh, play my sample here. Since you and before I even start editing the sample, I want to change a couple parameters just to make things easier to, uh, to play out and see what we're actually editing. So first thing, I'm going to go to my sound tab up here. I'm going to make sure I'm on the first page of parameters with these arrows at the top here. And I'm going to work with polyphony here. And if you're not familiar with this, this is just a function that allows you to tell machine how many times to let the sample play. So it defaults to eight. And this means that the sample can be playing eight times at a time before it starts cutting itself off. So you can hear that. Now you can hear it's very hard to actually understand what the sample is sounding like. So I like to bring my polyphony down to one, and this basically uh, cuts the sample off as soon as you play it again. So it's a lot easier to understand what the sample is actually sounding like. And when we start editing it, that's going to be very important because otherwise we wouldn't actually hear the edits that we're making. So once we have the polyphony set, I can scroll over one page. And um, this is something that you can work with if you want to. You can turn the, uh, the one-shot mode down to one of these other options here, and that will allow you to uh, only have the sample playing when the pad's being held down. But I like to leave it on one shot, Since you and then use the choke feature with the shift and the mute buttons down on the bottom of the hardware. So now that we have all those options set up, I'm going to go into the sampling menu and actually start editing. So that's up located right here, and on the second tab, go to edit. So the first thing I always do is change the start and the end points and actually get my sample the length that I want to work with. We can do that using these two knobs here. So I can just bring in the start, bring in the end to whatever I want. Now, if you want to see a little bit more detail, you can use the knobs under the right screen, zoom in a little bit, and then uh, move around with the other knob over here. So make sure my start point is where I want it. And in my sample, you can see it's almost a minute and 20 seconds long, so I'll bring in my end point I'm just a little bit here to uh, make sure I'm not working with a super long sample and kind of overload machine's resources. So now that I have my start and my end point set, I'm going to truncate the sample. So I'm going to scroll through here till I find truncate. And when I hit apply, that's just going to cut the sample at the start and the end points and everything else will go away. So you have this, this nice sample, the exact length that you want to work with. So now that that's all ready to go, I'm going to move through some of the features and show you what they do. First of all, we have normalize, and this is going to increase the gain of the sample until it starts clipping. So if I normalize my sample here, you can see that the size of the waveform increases, showing you that the, the sample is actually louder now. And it's up to you if you want to increase the volume of your sound, or if you want to increase the volume of your sample and then uh, change it from there. I personally like to normalize my samples and then edit the, the sound volume. That's just going to give me a baseline to work from. Now moving on, we have a reverse function over here. And you might be able to tell this is just going to reverse your sample. But this is a good time to show you the differences between play range. And then if I scroll over with this arrow over here, it's going to give me selection range here. And play range, if I'm selecting this, this is going to give me the start and the end points of my sample. So if I bring it in, that's what we did when we decided to uh, truncate our sample. But if I go to selection range, if I move this in, you can see that highlighted gray section is showing a, a part of the sample while the start and the end points stay the same. So if I just want to select a, a certain part of my sample with the selection range and then apply reverse, this is only going to reverse the selection that I had selected in the range here. So that's just a nice way to selectively edit your samples. If I undo that, I bring my selection range to include the whole sample and then reverse it. Now the entire sample is reversed instead of just that selection that we had previously. And moving on from this, we have fade in. And um, again, this is just going to pretty, pretty self-explanatory. If you just bring in um, the selection range, whoops, if you just bring in the selection range here, then fade in. That's uh, just going to set the, the volume at the start point at zero, and then at the end point, it'll be what it originally was. And you can get some some different kinds of fades if you just keep applying it. Some more uh, some more aggressive fades. Um, some things to experiment there. And next we have fade out, so it's the exact same thing. And 
And I like to use these fade in and fade out options when I have clicks or pops at the start or the end of my sample. So if at the start I slice it up, I didn't slice it right on a on a good mark and I have a little click. I like to go in and make a very, very short fade just to, uh, to set this to start point back to zero and that will give a much smoother sounding sample. So a nice little tip there. Now next we have our fixed DC and um, I don't really use this much but I looked it up and this is apparently an option that will automatically fix those clicks and pops. So um, something to try out there. I, although I haven't actually used it much, maybe I should start doing that. Um, next we have a silence option here. So if I change my selection range a little bit and then apply this, that's going to cut out whatever was in your selection range and replace it with silence. Um, so that was a little bit long there, but um, you get the idea. Um, moving on, we have a cut option. So let's just go make our selection range a little bit smaller here. Apply this. That's going to uh, do the silence option, but instead of um, just just adding silence where their selection range was, it's going to actually cut it out. Once you do this, you can go over to the paste option here, which we'll get to in a little bit, and then uh, the paste that that section that you cut out and put it in a different part of the sample. Um, I'm going to undo that, go to copy, and this is just going to copy whatever you have selected. So if I do this and then go over to paste, I can uh, change my selection range here, and then paste that here. That's going to uh, just, as you would expect, put the put the sample selection where you want it to. So I'm not actually putting much effort into uh, applying these effects in the right places. So it sounds pretty weird right now, but I just want to show you what they actually do. I'm going to undo that because it sounds pretty bad. Next, we have a duplicate option here. So working with my selection range. I want to duplicate that, that's going to just copy it and then uh, paste it right after it while adding some to the sample. Now moving on, we have our time stretch option here and this is something that I use a lot so I want to go into quite a bit of detail here. You might notice this is one of the few options that has the settings menu over here. So if I enter that, you can see we have a lot of different options that we can choose from. So first of all, we have our tune option here, and you might be wondering, well, what's the difference between this tune here and then the tune over here in the, let's see, the tune over here in Machine's um, other menu over here. And um, the difference is this tune in the time stretch menu will change the pitch of the sample while keeping the tempo the same. And if you exit this and use this tune here, that's going to change the pitch by also slowing down or speeding up the sample. So they both have the merits, just choose the one that you want to use accordingly. So after tune, we have a, um, a formant correction here. So this is apparently something that works with melodic samples. If you want to keep some of the original timber of the sample, you can turn this on and just uh, experiment with it and see how it sounds in your individual case. Now we have two different options of time stretch. So first we have this beat option here, and this is going to time stretch by EPM. So it's going to automatically detect it, or you can turn that off and then enter in your sample's tempo if you happen to know it. But I find that the auto detection works pretty well. Um, this is going to detect it and then you can change the BPM and set it to whatever you want to work with. So, so nice if you have the sample's original tempo and the tempo of your project, you can just lock it in automatically without any guesswork. Now I also have an option to change the beat mode to free and this is just going to replace all those tempo options with a percentage. So if you want to speed it up, you can increase it past 100% and on the contrary, if you want to slow it down, just knock it down below 100%. And if you just want to hear how it sounds, if I uh, want to speed this up a little bit, do that and then apply it. So I still have some edits from some of the previous previous options there, but um, so you can hear that the sample still sounds very good. There's not any artifacts or anything like that. Very usable, especially in the mix. So time stretch was the final option that I wanted to cover. I hope going through some of those different editing features and showing you what they do on an actual example can help you get working with the features in your own projects. As always, make sure to leave any comments or questions if you have them. Um, any tutorial ideas would be greatly appreciated for next week, and um, I hope to hear from you all soon. So take it easy, and I will see you on the next video. Thanks for watching.